Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the video. My name is Brian and I am the current owner of Eagle's Quest Passport 51 foot. However, registered as a 15 meter yacht here in Hong Kong so that uh, you can legally sail her with your grade 2 vessel license. Lots of information on that first page so go back if you want to read it. Uh, nice shot of EQ chasing an eagle. Here's Eagle's Quest in her trimaran mode and uh, of course, wrapped it up to this catamaran. Nice shot here. You can really see the unique shape of uh, Eagle's Quest with that canoe stern, which we're going to see again here in this video. I think I've laid this out. We're going to have a look at the exterior lap around the boat here, and then we're going to go have an interior look. Finally, I think uh, a little deck, um, deck walk around, and then some sailing videos that I've put together for you. Fresh paint job. Uh, just finished the paint this month in October. Oh, just one more comment about that canoe stern. Not only is it just a, a beautiful shape, classic shape to the boat, but it's very sea kindly in a, in a following sea. So They did a great job with the paint. Dragon Marine did that here in Sai Kung, uh, Bok Sha Wan, Hebe Haven actually, and uh, they just really took their time and uh, no expense spared on that for sure. Boom was painted as well. Look up the rig. You'll see the mooring there, which is also for sale, and I'm happy to discuss the details uh, with you regarding that. If you'd like to buy the yacht, I will happily sell the uh, mooring on with you as well. It's a government mooring, so it's perfectly legal. Nice reflection of the water off there on Eagle's Quest. Oh, and I've managed to leave the chili bin up on the deck. Anyway, here we are in the cockpit, and we're about to go down below to have a look at the interior of Eagle's Quest, which I've always thought was absolutely beautiful. Um, you'll hear me say this maybe a few times in this video, but they really just don't make yachts like they used to. This was built in 1985 in Taiwan. The interior was done in Taiwan. She is an American boat, finished in America, but teak was abundant back then and affordable. Uh, these days, you couldn't really build a yacht or afford to build a yacht like this with solid teak. Uh, there's no veneer on the boat. I'll open some cabinets here in a little while and you'll see that uh, it's just all solid teak and, and well-constructed. Little map of the world there. If you hear the wind howling in the background, I apologize. This isn't a professional setup by any means, and there's a typhoon going on at the moment here in Hong Kong. Nice look at the dining area, settee, wood-burning fireplace, which we'll get to in a moment here. Bar area, uh, vinyl records. We got a record player on board. Nice airy uh, light uh, set up here in the boat with those windows up there and uh, oversized big hatches. I always love the color of the teak. It just There's no filter on this video, just a nice red color to this Taiwanese, Burmese teak uh, that uh, we unfortunately don't really have access to these days. Have a look at the countertops. Uh, I replaced those a couple years ago. Uh, here's a nice little pantry area that I could have cleaned a bit better before I opened. New galley fan and uh, nice big sink here. I mean, you really feel like you're in a proper home, not just a sailboat when you are in this galley. Neat feature, uh, two foot pump faucets here, and uh, quite nice. The one on the right is for salt water, the one on the left is fresh water, so you could potentially, if you're in a place with nice clean water, kind of wash and soap your dishes with the salt water and then rinse them with the fresh. And you just push down with your feet, oh, open the valve first, usually works, and then uh, <laughs> push with your feet and the water comes out without using any electrical power uh, or, or um, running the DC pump. Of course there is a DC pump that automatically pumps if you just open that mixer there. And that uh, faucet has a spray function as well and it moves nicely between the two sinks. So very capable galley. You've got a four burner uh, range and a nice big oven down below. Again, you know, I've lived in flats in, in Hong Kong, and this boat's just been so much nicer to live in. You've got uh, this nice big oven, which I never had in a flat when I lived in Central. I've cooked turkeys in the, in the oven for Christmas, and I've cooked beef wellingtons and all sorts of nice stuff. Refrigerator, freezer on the left, fridge on the right. Top access is really nice, as we know uh, hot air rises, so uh, you don't let all the cold air out when you use that top one. But you got the access on the bottom as well, when you need to reach back there for a cold beer. Freezer's nice. I uh, usually keep the freezer around minus 15 centigrade and the fridge about one or two, and it comfortably maintains those temperatures. Have a look here, this uh, see-through area. Really kind of nice, just opens up the boat and gives you this nice roomy feel. Uh, engine access is underneath that uh, bench and through those doors that you see to the left. 
These just don't slide out. You have to lift and then pull out, which is a really neat feature. And again, where they don't make boats the way that they used to. You know, these days they've kind of got these IKEA uh, drawers. Look how deep that is, with big Dutch ovens and stuff in there. Anyway, uh, you know, a modern boat's going to have those little push button locks that never really keep doors closed. And if you're at sea or having a bit of a bumpy ride, inevitably will open up on you. These never will. They're just made for cruising. Hand holds everywhere. So uh, when you're at sea, you can really just wedge yourself into this galley and be very comfortable doing your work. Fiddles on the uh, Corian countertop to keep everything where you want it. So yeah, I think the galley is really nice. Uh, a bit of a selling feature for me, it was anyway. The, uh, the uh, what are we doing here? Having a look at the U-shaped settee. I've always liked those as well. Oh, here we're looking at the solid teak, no veneer here. Floorboards are the same way. All the cabinets the same way. Solid teak. Yeah. I was talking about the U-shaped settee and the green color. I always kind of thought it reminded me of an old uh, gentleman's drinking or smoking room. Quite nice. These were done in New Zealand uh, when the boat was sailed across the Pacific. They did a bit of a refit down there. Here's the wood-burning fireplace on a cold winter's day. Even here in Hong Kong, we get them occasionally. Open a bottle of whiskey, fire up the fireplace. Happy days. I thought about replacing it a few times. I wanted to put an ice maker there, maybe a, a bar on top of an ice maker or something. But every time I talk about it, all my friends say there's no way that they'd allow me to rip that thing out because it's uh, quite the talking piece and fun in the wintertime. Vinyl records up there. We've got a record player on the boat. And uh, I use this storage area for a bar. But, uh, of course, you could put anything you wanted in there. So when the boat was commissioned, they wanted that wood-burning fireplace. They also requested a sauna. This used to be a sauna. You can see the cedar wood back there, and there was a bench there before I replaced the bench with this brand new Northern Lights generator. She's a top-of-the-line unit. Uh, this is the three-cylinder generators where they run nice and quietly and don't vibrate the boat to death. In fact, when you're in the aft cabin sleeping, you cannot even hear it running. So dustless, you don't see any oil stains, new uh, oil filter, fuel filter change. She's really a beautiful unit with a, a custom install by a professional Sparky here in Hong Kong. There's the fridge and freezer units. So those are the compressors. And these are built by a company called Technotics that build these fridge and freezers for sailing cruisers. They're meant to be worked on by us sailing cruisers. So you don't need to have any sort of refrigerator training or, or whatnot to, to work on those. They're very simple. Yeah, there's the cedar wood from the old sauna. 16,000 BTU. BTU unit uh, aircon back there as well that keeps the Ford saloon and the uh, Ford uh, cabin absolutely Baltic if you if you like it like I do in the summertime I like it nice and cool I'm from the northern latitudes so I've always been thankful to have that oversized aircon uh, very comfortable to be inside Eagle's Quest in the summertime and you can keep that generator running while you're out sailing and all the ladies will be happy to be down below and, and nice and cool. So this is the Ford guest berth. Uh, I guess I kept keep some of my kitchen stuff in there because I use this as a guest berth, but uh, lots of storage here. Uh, that door forward is the anchor chain locker. Got 100 meters of chain. Correction, 30 meters, 100 feet of chain uh, on board. Cool little look back. I don't sleep up here mo uh, most of the time, but I've always enjoyed this view of, of Eagle's Quest. Just beautiful to look back there. And, and see uh, the boat, or when you wake up, have this view of the mast is, is quite nice, and the rig. Lots of storage underneath this forward cabin, and there is a separate battery for the windlass up there as well. Here we are in the guest head, forward head, which is an ensuite uh, version. Oh, there's me. Hello. So here we go up the uh, ensuite access from the saloon. Tecma head, you won't find any cheapo Japsco pump heads here. It's a push button and it uh, adds water and, and then evacuates the water with a macerator. Look at that uh, nav station chair, which is quite nice. Uh, all the comforts of home here. You know, and again, they don't make yachts like they used to. They don't, uh, these days, wouldn't use this space for a full chart size nav station. They'd cram a berth in there or something, but here you have a nice little workspace if, if you're using EQ as a home or a uh, nice place for, place for your charts if you're sailing. All the electronics up there included a uh, 
autopilot remote control so you can walk around the yacht and control the uh, autopilot from anywhere. On the right, your AC. On the left, your DC uh, electrical panel and a battery monitor there. Storage underneath, there's a separate battery underneath there for the engine starting battery. And brand new batteries for the, uh, the house bank, four new big uh, batteries for the house bank. Looking back to the tool storage on the right and the pilot berth on the left little step down here. I've always thought about putting a washer and dryer, at least in the left side or that one half of this part, but it's excellent storage, big deep drawers for all your tools and whatnot. There's a record player there as well, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, that left side would be quite nice for a washer dryer, I think, if you're going to go cruising. I live in the harbor, so uh, really no need for me to have one. This pilot berth is a really neat function as well on Eagle's Quest. Uh, you can't fall out of there when you're at sea, which is always a plus, but you're also located right in the center of the vessel, which um, is the part of the boat that's going to be moving the least, of course, at sea. So it's a very comfortable place to be, and it's where my Taylor guitar sleeps comfortably. So we'll put him back. Right, coming back, lots of uh, storage on the right and left. Uh, oh, sorry, before we step into the aft cabin, we'll have a look at the door. And uh, what do we have here? The cutters for the rig. Hopefully never for the rig, but uh, they are there for safety's sake. Walk back to the aft cabin, the owner's cabin. Lots of storage for shirts and shorts and clothes and suits. There's my tuxedo out for some reason. Big bed, uh, queen size bed, at least uh, you can see that it narrows toward the foot of the bed, but we, we use a queen size sheet and it fits uh, perfectly toward the top of the bed there, so lots of room for a couple. Lots of storage underneath there as well. Another 16,000 BTU unit back here, which uh, oh, both, I should mention, both units are uh, reverse cycle, so they'll heat in the wintertime as well. Lots of storage there for your shirts. Portholes are nice. Again, just a nice airy feel, especially with that uh, door and hatch open behind me, as you'll see here, uh, the entrance to the, the aft cockpit, owner's cockpit. Beautiful day here in Bakshaw 1. The shower's great. Uh, separate shower you'll see on smaller boats where they've got the shower and, and toilet combined. You basically sit on the toilet to have a shower. I've, I've never liked that. It doesn't feel like home. And this is just another feature, again, that makes Eagle's Quest just feel so much like a, a stately home. Lots of storage here. Uh, there's a bidet function. I don't know why, but they've put a bidet in there, which is cool if you're a lady, I think. I don't know. But uh, you push the button, and it fills it up with water, and then evacuates the water through the macerator. There is a, uh, a function you can change so it won't add water back to the uh, bowl. If you're at sea, that might be a good function. Soft closed seats there, and a medicine cabinet. Another look at the shower. You know, I lived in flats. Again, uh, I've mentioned this, I guess, a couple times, but uh, you, I, I, I lived in a, a little studio flat in Central, and uh, here you've got two bedroom, two bathroom, well, three bedroom if somebody wants to sleep in the pilot berth, and. Uh, Plenty of room to have guests over, and just uh, it's, it's a, she's a nice home. She's a, a world-class cruising vessel as well. If you want to go out and, and do some serious cruising, she's she's a good yacht for you. I've thought about putting a TV there before. It'd be a nice place for one, I guess. I'm, I'm, I just never really wanted to have a TV, but uh, could be there for you if that's who you are. And I'm walking up the steps. Just behind me is the aft cockpit owner's area. The guy who taught me how to sail the boat was always pretty impressed with this area. He said that you could sit back here and never have to crank a winch handle, uh, never get hit in the head with the boom. Lazarettes and storage underneath there as well. And just a nice place to drink a gin and tonic. Sorry, a little dirty in there. I could have cleaned that up as well. I was in a bit of a rush to put this video together. Uh, yeah, nice place to sit and chill. We'll call that the gin and tonic club. G&T zone back here. We're on the deck tour, I guess, and this is a big old 65 Lumar winch. You get two of those for your Genoa or Spinnaker sheets. It's umbrella material and these clears that you see there, they all fold down, so it's basically an off switch for the weather when uh, it gets windy or, or rainy. You can put those down. And uh, that uh, sunbrella material is all new this year in 2020. It's uh, uh, designed and installed by prof professionals and uh, 
the lady named uh, Janice put these all together and just did an amazing job. It's a bit of a work of art, if you ask me. I put the leather-bound uh, wrap around the helm a couple of years ago. All the lines lead to the cockpit except for those two furling lines, which in a pinch you could run around the staysail winch and uh, into the cockpit. And I've done that a few times before, furled them with the electrical winch. Uh, if it's a bit of a blow outside and you don't want to leave the cockpit or if you're single-handing. There's a draw vent there. You've got three of those on, on board. And I like those old features of the classic yachts. New mainsail. Uh, she's, I think, two years old, actually, but I've only had her out about maybe 10, maximum 12 times, so it's, it's, it's new. Yeah, there is a bit of a stain on the left side of the, uh, the teak there. I had a cover sitting there for uh, the haul out, and uh, it stained it, but I will scrub that up for you. No problem. And again, a bit of a mold. She's been up on the hard for uh, almost 20 days, so there's a bit of green mold there on the Genoa that I will certainly scrub off. Apologies for uh, not having it perfect for this viewing, but, uh, you know, she's just a yacht that you have to come out and see. Uh, uh, I hope this video is a good introduction, but I, I, I would hope that uh, you'd come out and see the yacht if you're at all interested, because she just, uh, she shows so well, she feels so sturdy, so homely, and uh, sails like a dream. Oh, there's Marky down there putting together a fishing rod. Spend the afternoon trying to catch fish off the back of the boat. Pretty neat place to live out here in Bok Sha Wan. I've always said that this is the best address in Hong Kong, especially, you know, we've gone through the protest and now this COVID stuff. And uh, to just live out here and, and be a part of nature and have all this room, uh, it's been amazing. I completely regret having to sell her. Unfortunately, I've lost my job recently, but uh, that's another conversation. There's uh, the helm and cockpit area, very comfortable cockpit. Uh, more than six foot, I'd say I, I easily stretch out and sleep it up there if we're sailing or just want to spend an evening in the cockpit. Spot for your life raft there where you can see the, uh, the varnished teak uh, when we go offshore. That ladder is really nice. It's easy to uh, uh, climb up and climb down. And uh, it, it's overbuilt, oversized, just like every, everything else on this yacht. Uh, just really well put together. Oh, I should mention the rigging is rod rigging as well, which is uh, far superior to your traditional spiraled uh, rigging. This is much stronger and lasts a lot longer. We're back in the G&T zone there. Okay, let's go sailing. Uh, nice little sunset. Oh, you can see the blue LEDs from those speakers, uh, which kind of cool, I thought. I think we're just off uh, nine pins there heading back. Oh, this is a bit more of a windy day. We'll just show you how Eagle's Quest... You know, the deck stays mostly dry, even in days like this. What is there, 20 knots of wind there, and we're doing about seven knots. Heading to wind. Very comfortable boat, and uh, just loves bigger seas. Sails well uh, in light winds as well, but uh, on a reach and a big sea, she just she really feels at home. So, fun boat to sail, and she takes great care of you. Look at those tow rails. You won't see that in... Uh, Newer boats. Uh, some of my favorite crew here. We've got Nadia and Harvey. Bit of a bigger wind day again, 18 knots of breeze, and uh, we are just comfortable in the cockpit, chilling it out. We could put the covers down, which, as I mentioned before, is an off switch for the weather, but let's enjoy the breeze today. Sean the Prone enjoying the ride. We're on a bit of a lean. Uh, this is the day we first got the new mainsail a couple of years ago. Uh, I think this is our first look at it installed on the boat. So we're just cruising under main right now, admiring the new sail. It's a battened mainsail in mast furling, obviously. This was before the boom was painted, so uh, there's no more Eagle's Quest on the boom, but uh, it's all freshly painted. Sean's having a good time. And the best mainsail trimmer in Hong Kong there and his son. Having a look at the main. I could have used my mainsail trimmer on this day. It looks like uh, the main needs pulled in a bit, but there we are sailing. And uh, I think this was the same day. This was a great day heading out to Yale for a little seafood. Ladies enjoying the aft cockpit GNT club. And you just saw somebody come out of the, uh, the aft cockpit entrance there, which is really neat. You can run, enter, uh, and exit the boat from either the center cockpit or the aft cockpit. Yeah, here we're on a double-handed race. I sail the boat single-handed quite easily, as all those, hi Steve, all those lines uh, run to the cockpit. It's so easy to manage single or short-handed. Uh, 
we were sailing to Llama Island for the Llama Fun Day, and they had asked us to bring those kegs, and I'm cooking the helmsman a little lunch, as you do. Anyway, get in touch if you would like any more information. I'd love to show you the boat, or if you just want to come out and have a beer. Uh, again, regret to have to sell her, but uh, unfortunately, it seems like it might be time for me to move on from Hong Kong. So, uh, well, there is the end, and I will have to stop this. Please feel free to get in touch. Uh, I'll leave my phone number and address in the description below. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.